Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to episode 122 of the Business Bootcamp podcast. And today our sponsor is LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. If you're listening to this today, we're actually having our next webinar tomorrow, October the 13th. So if you are listening to this like right after I post this, you can sign up within the next 20 hours and get on the live webinar. On that webinar, I show exactly how I scaled my business from zero to $100,000 a month in revenue. Uh, and I, exa- I walk you exactly how, did, how I did that and the five things that are keeping you from scaling your business that fast. Uh, so make sure you get on to landscapebusinesscourse.com and sign up for the webinar. If not for tomorrow, we do one every week. And right now we're doing a big pre-sale of the actual course with all the videos and, and tutorials and all our contracts and stuff. So if you have a service-based business or if you've been thinking of starting a landscape business, definitely want to check it out and that'd be great. It's going to be live. I'm actually testing a new platform called Webinar Jam tomorrow. And so it might be a little bit rocky, but I think it's going to be good for asking questions, Q&A, and all of that good stuff. So make sure you check it out. Today we are doing a Q&A here on the podcast and kind of a unique niche that has never really come across my path on the show yet and it comes from a a, a guy named AJ Hartman and you can check out his website at ajhartmanracing.com and so I'm going to read his question then we're going to go through it and we're going to talk today a lot about how to optimize your e-commerce website okay here we go. This is from AJ sent an, uh, in a question from the website businessbootcamppodcast.com. You can submit your questions and remember you can always send a video as well so I can show it on YouTube. All right. It says, hey Mike, came across your podcast around episode 80. I've caught up and listened to every single one, some multiple times along with reading your book. I own a business that manufactures lightweight carbon fiber parts for race cars and high performance vehicles. You can check it out at ajhartmanracing.com. A very quick synopsis on carbon fiber is that it is lighter and stronger than fiberglass, but the materials are more expensive and the process to manufacture stronger and lighter parts is much more involved and time consuming. But for a, ra- but for a race car where lightweight is important, that holds value to some. My business grew about 70% from 2014 to 2015 and is on track to end 2016 close to 100% growth in sales this year. I continually find myself dealing with people that want a part for cheaper. My parts are sometimes two to three times the cost of a fiberglass variant made by another company. I need some ideas on how to convey that we, are, we make both a superior product that warrants that cost. Sorry, I need, I need some ideas on how to convey that we make a superior product that warrants that cost. I have blogged about it, and in those blog posts, I don't mention competitors' names, but try to highlight why our parts are superior. I will share these posts on these blog posts on my Facebook page and some Facebook groups as well. I, also, I have also accepted that our parts are not for everyone. I have also toyed with the idea of starting a second brand of a different name and make cheaper fiberglass parts. Since they are a more common, easier to make, my rough numbers put them as not as good quality or margins, but maybe higher volume. It may dilute my high, higher margin sales along with I enjoy making the higher end parts more as I like making a quality part at the end. So he asked for any input on these situations. So. AJ, first of all, I agree with you sometimes that you can dilute a brand when you try to start selling cheaper products. Um, and so, but what I have to say though, first of all, if, if anyone's selling anything online, the same way that when we talk about like on the webinar or like my landscaping business, we talk about things like your trucks being clean and your employees being trained and all of that stuff. When it comes to your e-commerce site, the the way your store is set up is incredibly important. Yes, SEO is important, and we're gonna talk about that here in a second. Um, and that's all important. However, if you if someone gets to your to your e-commerce store and it just looks unprofessional or it doesn't look high class, then it's it's not like that they're gonna buy a high class or high margin, uh, higher end product from that website. 
Just like when you go into a store, if you're expecting to pay five or six hundred dollars for a coat, you expect the store to be clean, modern, well lit, uh, have friendly people, salespeople, all of that. Same thing when it goes comes to an e-commerce online store. People are expecting if they're going to pay for a high end product of super high quality, they expect to get something in return that is a high quality product uh, and a high quality experience. So. The, the the experience of the store and everything, the design that goes into it and the employees is all super important even when they're online. So that being said, when we talk about your e-commerce site, two things that are most important. Obviously design, but just as important really is how fast your site is so that Google likes it. Okay, so we, I could talk a lot about your blog, which is by the way awesome. You could probably do some more hyperlinks by the way for your uh, you, in your blog post because you make really quality blog posts. I checked it out. Uh, you can put some more links in there to your Facebook page, to other blog posts, to other websites within your industry. That will boost your credibility as far as SEO. But one thing I want to kind of focus on today is speed. All right. So the first thing I noticed when I went to AJHartmanRacing.com is it's a little bit slow loading up. So. I'm going to give a couple tools out there today. They aren't sponsored the show or anything like that. They're just tools that I use all the time to evaluate and uh, really increase the, the speed of your website. And the reason it's so important, obviously, is because when people come to your website and it takes two or three seconds, the amount of times that they're going to just go to a different page or just forget about going to your website is dramatically increased if it just takes a, little bit, a couple of seconds longer. But also for Google... They d this is something in their algorithm that, algorithm that is definitely weighted as far as the speed of your website and when it loads, okay? So, two things I'm going to tell you. First of all, go. It, it, everyone out there can do this for regardless of what site or if you have e-commerce or just your service-based business. You can go to testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. Testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. And all you do is you type in your URL... And you get a free report. You can buy, I think, uh, like a more in-depth report, but the free one's pretty much all you need. And it's going to tell you what your speed it is on desktop, on mobile, what, and then what your mobile compatibility is. So, like, your mobile compatibility on AJHartmanRacing.com was 98 out of 100, which is really good. Uh, your, your speed on mobile was 74 out of 100, which is decent. Uh, and then, but then your desktop speed was 29 out of 100. And I think the reason for that is, is the, your, your pictures are so large. And so if you go to testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com and you get these scores, you can test, I mean, click and see why they are scoring you that way. So if you go there, AJ, you can see that the desktop speed is 29 out of 100. And if you click on see what to fix there on the page, it'll show you that uh, one of the big things is that your 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 images images aren't optimized okay and so what that means is typically it's obviously very good to have a lot of pictures on your website pictures videos etc however if they are not optimized for web they can be very cumbersome as far as the size of the file the resolution all of that and so if, if you have big pictures on your website this is important um, and so now you're like okay well what do I do there's two things you should do number one everyone out there if this is a problem for you you have a lot of pictures and it takes a while for your site to load go to a website called kraken.io again this is not sponsored this is just something I use a tool it's k-r-a-k-e-n dot i-o and you just just use the free web interface you don't need to like actually buy the program just you try the free web, web interface and all you can do is drop in your files from your computer and it'll optimize them it'll reduce the size of the of the image as far as how much space it's going to take for and how, how like it it allows the web browser to load it a whole lot faster and so sometimes i've seen that program reduce the size of my images not the quality not like like the resolution but reduce the file size by like 50 to 60 percent i've seen that happen before on when i've used it so definitely an awesome tool to use to increase the speed of your site and within a couple weeks you can try go go back to that google uh tool testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com try it again and see if your scores are improving and so this is important for SEO. It's something we don't think about a lot. We think a lot about hyperlinks. We think about 
uh, connecting to other websites, making sure social and everything is connected. And that's good and that's really important. But I think speed of your website loading is something that we overlook. Now that being said, uh, AJ, when it comes to your website and we talked about your, your mobile, your, your, your store, your e-commerce store needing to look as good as like if you go to a high-end commercial retail store, you expect it to be high-end. And so I think you could you could develop your site a little further as far as from the the design aspect. I think you could create a, a logo around your your ajhartmanracing.com, not just text at the top of the page. Make some sort of a logo that you can put on every blog post, that you can put on all your pictures. Like all of that you can really begin to brand and create a brand around AJ Hartman Racing. And so that's one thing. Number two is on your front page, and this is a lot of times something to do with WordPress and when you make e-commerce pages, uh, they allow you to feature products and they have like another bar with new products and current top sellers and all of that. And so what I can see from on, on your site, AJ, is you have, uh, let's see here, 5, 10, 15, 20 products that are on the front page that fall into these categories of top sellers, new products, featured products, all of this stuff, right? I would recommend doing two or three best sellers or new products or something on the front page and not so many. Like right when I scroll down, I see it start seeing 20 images of things I haven't searched for and probably people are coming to this and they have a very specific thing they're looking for. Uh, yes, you might get the person that's like, oh, that's cool, I'll buy that. But usually they're coming here for a certain part. So what you're wanting to do here is just do two or three products that you can really push that are really popular or, or, or kind of a hot commodity, hot item at the time. And then you can really focus on those so that when people come to the site, they look at them, they actually see what they are and it's not just a blur of add to cart buttons and pictures. So obviously those pictures all need to be optimized. That's one of the things that are making the site slow. But I also think you can scale back on how many pictures and how many items are featured on your front page. Uh, you could even change your whole front page to more of a video centric something. I, I, if you have great racing videos and you're able to throw some drone footage in, you could make a, a 30 second video that is your front page that's really catchy, that shows a lot of the, the, the driving and the actual use of your product and then have a second video on your slider menu here that shows the difference, for instance, between carbon fiber and fiberglass and the strength and the, the weight and all of that. So that's just kind of some, some tips on e-commerce and front page and speed SEO stuff that you can kind of mine from really all sorts of, like even our service-based businesses, I still use the test my site think with google.com tool and the kraken.io tool because regardless of your industry you want to make sure your seo is good so you're on the front page of google and we actually just passed our competitor whose name is like our city name lawncare.com we actually passed them when you type in our city name lawn care into google we actually beat them even though their exact name and their exact url is what they're the person searching we still are higher than them and it's because of the detail that we focus now on images and speed and obviously making a blog and doing links and making socials connected and all of this stuff and having the google plus page and all of these things that are so important and so that's a really key component of it now you talked about aj you talked about diluting your brand with this kind of cheaper model or cheaper line of products that you think would be beneficial because it draws in a larger audience. And there's always going to be this kind of trade-off, either high volume, low margin, or low volume, high margin. And right now you're kind of in that low volume, high margin business. This is what I, re I would recommend you doing. You can still be the high, high class or like the, the high... Um, high quality product or high end in your industry and still sell sell the lower priced product. What I mean by that is if someone's coming to you and they're wanting carbon fiber, there's really, in my opinion, I might, I not, I might be just uh, ignorant and not know the market very well, but I would imagine there's two different types of people coming to your, to your site. One, the, the, the racer that is actually racing their car full time or like they do it 
five times a week and they, they're at night and they're super serious and they really want their car light and strong and all of that. Then you got the other guy who'd be someone more like me or like a younger guy or whatever that wants to just like make their car look really cool because carbon fiber looks sweet and it makes them look like a racer and it's more of a branding thing for themselves or like just makes them feel good and like they can work on their car and make parts and stuff. So I feel like there's two different markets here. Um, but I agree with you that you don't want to reduce your brand image and and uh, alienate those high profit margin customers by creating a cheap product. But what you can do is create two different lines. One, the professional line, and the second one can be kind of for the everyday user. And however you want to brand that, you could call it, you know, one could be AJ Pro and the other one could be AJ Elite or like something like or vice versa or however you want to name it is fine but you can make those two separate brand lines within your business now that being said when it comes to the cheaper model you still want to be more expensive than even comparable stuff in that market okay so you could go on Amazon and get really cheap carbon fiber and not even be anywhere close to your quality so you kind of want to be just above that um, but you don't obviously don't want to go up all the way up to your highest product, um, the really high end carbon fiber stuff. So I would recommend ma recommend making these two different types of lines, keeping your high end, keeping the same margin that you're making the high end products. Keep that same margin for your low end products. Okay. So if you're making a forty percent margin or fifty percent margin on your high end products because it's going you're making it a hundred and selling it two hundred. Okay, well now you're gonna make a twenty five dollar product, still mark it up to so that you're making fifty percent margin. Still sell it for fifty dollars, okay? Um if you're if you're making it for twenty five, just so you have that same margin. And so you don't don't try to undercut your profitability profitability by going after cheaper cheaper uh clients or uh people in a different market that is you're primarily serving now however you don't want to alienate them and just completely they come to your site you have them they love your what you're writing about they're learning from you and there's lots of great data that you have on your site but then they're like oh this is just way too expensive this is way too elite i just want to make my car look cool i'm not really so much interested in making it two or three pounds lighter and so I think those are the people that you can really draw into your audience and maybe down the road they'll buy the, the more expensive higher end stuff. But um, that's just my suggestion to you. But it's definitely a valid concern when you're making a second product line that's going to go after a, a, a cheaper audience or even for someone that makes a very cheap product to go high end. Uh, and there's several brands I can mention that are trying to do that and there's just there's a bit of a disconnect. But there's definitely a way to keep your brand image high. Uh, without alienating the cheaper demographic of people that want a cheaper product and need that cheaper price tag because they don't care about some of the features that your high-end product makes or, or allows them to have. So that would that's what I would suggest to you, AJ. I hope that wasn't too beat up, but I hope everyone out there that has an e-commerce store or really a website of any type that sells stuff, but even just service-based businesses where, for the most part, service-based businesses, their contact their contact page is really their whole website. The only reason they put their website up is to say, hey, this is our name, this is our email, this is our phone number, give us a call for an estimate or something like that. That is so old school, like 20 years ago. Nowadays, service-based businesses need to be content creators, they need to be SEO driven, they need to be fast, responsive websites on mobile, and the people that do that are the ones that are going to win. And I really attribute in the past year our growth in our service business to the fact that we've jumped so high in Google uh, and that we've been able to slash our marketing uh, fund because once our website's doing well on Google and we're just, we're just constantly upgrading some of the, the content and just tweaking things, but yeah, all the while, really, we're not spending a whole lot of money, whereas with like print, you got to constantly do it. Uh, now we're just really, really busy and growing and things, so that's really great. So that's it for today, everyone. If you have a question on how to start, grow, or save your business, check out businessbootcamppodcast.com. Send me a video to businessbootcamppodcast at gmail.com. We'll make sure to get you on the show and answer your question. And remember, if you're listening to this today or anytime next week, make sure you go to landscapebusinesscourse.com. Sign up for the webinar. 
I'm going to tell you exactly how I scaled my business so fast in the service-based industry and how what five things are keeping you from scaling your business. That's it for today, everyone. This is Mike Andes on the Business Bootcamp Podcast, signing off.